<laughs> this is Ready News Review, the podcast. And now, now. America's independent voice, Rob, Rob, Rob Ready. <laughs> it's time for Dr. Lewis Gordon of Temple University. Life according to Lewis. Now at University of Connecticut, Dr. Lewis Gordon, how are you, sir? Oh, I am. I am with the rest of the nation, uh, grieving for that loss. Let's talk about it. Sure. As we know, there's only one story on which to reflect this week, the massacre in Newton, Connecticut. I begin with my condolence to the community, especially the families who lost loved ones in Newtown, and encourage all listeners to light a candle in memory of the 20 children and six teachers and administrators killed by Adam Lanza. They, their families, their community, the nation have lost the irreplaceable. These people are gone. They'll never return. Their lives have come to an end, in most cases, at the dawn of their potential. They are robbed of so much of what could have been, and for each of those who love them, that is ultimately irrelevant, because they have also been robbed of who, for them, always ought to be. You know, when you love someone, your view is not just that they exist, but that they ought to exist. The mother of the killer, Adam Lanza, a gun enthusiast who taught him to use those weapons, is among his victims. It is difficult to imagine those other 26 not also being indirect victims of such a callous decision. People are not talking about this, but they are also victims of her. I speak of callousness to raise an important question perhaps on everyone's mind, but not broached. The mantra of guns not killing people, but people doing so, loses its validity when weapons designed for warfare are at the disposal of nearly anybody. The obvious flaws in such logic with other weapons, such as explosives, bombs, some of which are also used recreationally among some members of the Newtown community. There, there were people blowing up stuff in that neighborhood. Should make clear the ridiculousness of such arguments. One could imagine the slippery slope to contradictions with regard to nuclear weapons, biological warfare, and on and on. Each requires human action to affect their deadly potential. The wave of monstrous acts wrought by access to such dangerous weapons is symptomatic of something wrong in the society. What more proof do we need to admit a failed policy? The president said, quote, make our country worthy of their memory, unquote. And he said this at the, to the grieving community and the nation this past weekend. There are too many people so wrapped up with greed and short-sighted rituals of entertainment that such foresight seems beyond them. They don't care about being on the wrong side of history, that they are aligned with a set of ideals that would make future generations look back with horror and disbelief at their mindset reveals their historical role, which promises no less than shame. Jeffrey Sachs wrote with clarity in his Huffington Post article today, it is called Overcoming Delusions About the Second Amendment. And here's what he says. He reminds us that, purp that the purpose of the Second Amendment was an 18th century worry about the federal government having a military that would threaten the autonomy of the states. It was not about having individuals bearing arms to fight against the government, an act which, in spite of the fantasies of the delusional, is nothing short of treason. Bad logic makes it into the public arena because there are people who profit from them. I think Sachs' conclusion is worth quoting. Here's what he says. He says, more basically the idea that unregulated private gun ownership and trade protects us against tyranny or that guns control would threaten tyranny to all of us is baseless. Democracies around the world regulate guns, preserve their freedoms, and achieve firearm murder rates that are a tiny fraction of the rates offered in the United States. He says, in the name of the children, let us wake from the trap of ancient history and the gun manufacturers. In other words, people from Wall on Wall Street and big business benefit from this. Perhaps the future will have enough sense to amend the Constitution to make explicit the liability of the Second Amendment. The nation did have enough sense to annul articles of the Constitution with pernicious consequences, such as the three-fifths rule in Article 1. But all that to the side, I close by reminding us of this, that the massacred were children, should remind us of what is at stake in a future in a failure to take heed of such warning. You've been listening to Ready News Review, the podcast with America's independent voice, Rob Ready, presented by Reading Communications Incorporated. For all the pressing news you need to know, log on to www.readingnewsreview.com.